Now, mm-hmm. I was saying at the beginning of the show, Ben, we're going to talk about everything that happened in London, but I feel like you have done, as I've said many a times, you have done an incredible job of planting seeds everywhere, just having little issues with a bunch of people. So that means you can go in a bunch of different directions. Now, all of a sudden, dare I say, you're the odd man out. It feels like all no. those... Yes, can That's I tell not you? true. Okay, you want to hear my theory okay. or no? Uh... Or you tell me, tell me your wrong. theory. You tell me your theory, and I'll tell you why you're wrong. Okay. So we had the seed with Darren Till. He just got knocked out. We had the seed with Masvidal. He just has his thing with Edwards. It would be He's scared f- of me. It'd be foolish to ignore. It feels like okay. And then obviously Tyron is is someone that you're not going to fight. Colby's going in the direction of Usman. That was another seed. Am I? Why am I wrong? Okay. Here's who. I, who's here's who. I am willing to fight next. Okay. Errol, you, re- you ready for this? I'm ready. Marty, Colby, Till, Wonderboy, RDA, Ponzinibbio, Waller, Maya, Edwards, or Masvidal? All of them. Well, yeah, I just read I read the damn top 10 minus tired of myself for you. That's right. <laughs> I'll fight any of them. Okay. That's, it, it, listen, here, it, let me ask you this question. Okay. How many of them are saying my name, Ariel? How many? Well, to his credit, Darren Till was, right? Darren Till was the he was the one. Yeah. That was it. I mean, you know, uh Masvidal wants to act all hard. And you know, in a certain sense he is, right? He's a he legit was a backyard brawler. You saw him in that video. But you know, he knows he knows and I know who's gonna win that fight. And he knows he can't come up and sucker punch me if we're in the octagon with the referee. He knows he has to deal with me for fifteen minutes. And that's why, you know, he's totally contradicting himself, right? And he's saying, I heard him say in that interview, I caught the last bit of it, that he wanted a money fight. Listen, I'm the biggest money fight you can get right now. Uh, he said that I was just there for social media and he wants to move towards the title. I'm ranked five spots ahead of you, Jorge. Um, you know, so I just don't, uh, I don't understand where he's trying to go. He's trying to make every excuse why he doesn't have to fight me. You never heard him once say, Put me against Askren. He's an easy fight. I'll kick his ass. He didn't say that. So based off all that, would it be fair to say that Masvidal is at the top of that list right now? I just gave you the list who I was going to fight. I'll fight any of them. No, but at the top, there has to be like a ranking, right? Uh, I don't care. Okay. He was very, you know, he had a lot of things to say at the media day about like he didn't want to say your name and he was getting fired up yeah. about you and all this stuff. Does that make you think that you're... Uh, you know, kind of under his skin, in his head, because at first it seemed like he didn't want to talk about you, but then he went on this like three minute thing yeah. about how, you know, you're being disrespectful and whatnot. It, it, it is. It's so funny, you know, and then, you know, I heard him say something, and this is like all these fighters, they, they just don't get it. And actually, your, your, um, your co host on your other shows, you know, is one of the guys who just points it out constantly, and he points it out so often. It's like, how do these fighters not get it? It's like, Ariel, the reason I came into the UFC right away, my first fight made a big huge gigantic paycheck was because i figured out how to market myself in a manner that people actually wanted to see me and all these other guys like i don't want to talk i don't want to do this he's disrespectful listen leon edwards said i don't know why he's in london well listen i'm in london because i'm trying to pick a fight because everyone's talking about me and that's why i get a big paycheck guys and if you can't figure that out then i can't help you i'm sorry and i mean i heard george at the end of the interview saying i want a big money fight well learn how to market yourself and maybe you'll get one yeah, I mean, I don't think he's going to get a title shot. I I, I guess I respect him he, for... He, he can't. He lost his last two fights before this one. There, it's impossible. Right, and he hasn't won a fight prior to this um, in two years. It does sort of seem like it has to be Edwards, doesn't it? I mean, they had an altercation uh, backstage. Yeah, How unfortunately, you I mean, I, you, you, would think that, you would think that's what they're going to do. Um, Edwards actually, you know, Edwards' credit, I, I thought Gunnar Nelson was going to look better. And Edwards kind of made Gunnar Nelson look bad, obviously, except for, say, the last 90 seconds or so. Um, so, you know, Edwards had, had a good night. He, he looked really good on Saturday night. What was it like? Okay, so you go to London, and uh, again, all these guys have issues with you. Till is their guy, so it seems like, you know, just 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 by proxy, they all the fans all have an issue with you as well. Yeah, yeah. What was it like? Like, what was the reception like? So, I mean, you, I, I think at least you caught part of the Q&A. It was, uh, I thought it was hilarious. They, they were harassing me. They were calling me names. They were talking trash. Um, that's okay. I, I didn't really expect anything different. I knew what I was going into. Uh, I was ready for it. I had fun with it. And I, you know, I love a passionate fan base. The fan base there was awesome. It was really cool how they, you know, they were all singing along to his song when he came out. They all had the cheers. 
I, I thought it was a cool experience. Um, you know, if we're talking, take me as a fighter or whatever out of it, just like, hey, if I'm a fan, like, that was a cool event to go to. Okay, so you never felt like they truly hated you or they were going to do something to you or anything like that? Like, you didn't feel uncomfortable? Uh, some of them did. There's a few of them that, you know, you can look in someone's eyes and see how angry they are. There, there were a handful that were really? like, really? Oh, uh, yeah. Like, at, right when Till got knocked out, yeah. there was a few guys who came up like, there's kind of like a fence right behind the first couple rows. And there was a few guys who came up and they're like, F you, Ben, he'll still kill you, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, I'm sorry that you're upset that your boy just got knocked dead, but I had nothing to do with it. You know, like, why are you taking your anger out on me? Are you shocked that he got knocked out like that? Uh, you know, I'll, I'll say yes. Obviously, I was picking Till before the fight. The one thing I did notice, um, which... You know, when I was helping Tyron prepare, I was more thinking from a grappling standpoint as opposed to a striking standpoint. You know, because that, that's obviously the spot that I, that I, you know, do for Tyron. He's got Dean and Duke to work on his striking. But I was kind of shocked how high Darren Till held his head. You know, and if you watch uh, when he took that last punch, his head was just freaking out there, ready to get smacked. So, you know, I was kind of, I, I, I didn't really see that before because I wasn't paying attention to it, but I was really kind of uh, thrown off by that. I thought it was a uh, really poor defense on his uh, part. It feels, at least to me, like of, of all the options that were out there for you, this was the most interesting one because he was the one that was really, you know, going after you, saying your name, calling you yeah. the name that's on your shirt. When you saw him get knocked out, was it a little deflating? Oh, yeah, it was disappointing. They actually got, they had me like, for the last two fights, I'm sure they'll put it out at some point, they had me like, live on camera that I was doing like a, a I don't recall what they, a front row yeah, yeah, commentary yeah. or something right I, I, yeah well I was like ah I think I said something like ah shit well my next fight just got ruined oh. you know so, something to, to that effect so yeah um yeah that, that was uh deflating because I was really I was really having a good time with it obviously he, he was highly ranked um highly regarded he's got a very passionate fan base so we, we were gonna have fun with that one and I would imagine after losing like that it's not a fight that you're really interested anymore if the again, uh, listen, I told I just told you my list ten minutes ago, Ariel. Uh, <laughs> you know, if they if they say tills next, tills next, that's fine. Okay. Uh, have they even asked you when you're ready to go again? I mean, I I feel like they'd they want to. Not. I actually had two very cordial text message conversations with Dana. What? In the last yes, very cordial. Tell us, tell us who reached out to who first. Uh, Dana did the first time. Whoa. And, what do you say? Uh, what do you yeah. say? Uh, I you I don't it? recall. Uh, no, it, it, was, it was polite, though, and I said something like, you know, we went back and forth, and I said, I would really like to sit down with you, and he said, okay, fair enough. Next time I'm in Vegas, we'll do that. And then the second time, I was actually trying to figure out how to get into the octagon to challenge Till after the after the um, fight, and no one there in London was comfortable saying, okay, Ben, go ahead and do it. Uh -huh. So I figured, hey, I sent, I sent him a picture of my shirt that I had on, um, and he thought that was pretty funny. And I said, hey, what do I do to get the octagon? He said, man, we can't do that. Uh, we're not ready for it or something. So, you know, I, I, I was trying to think back of, of all the times that's happened, you know, with, I, where it seems like it was with the UFC's permission. The only one I could really think of was Brock. I know there's other people that have stormed the cage, but there's been no one else who's really um, kind of, you know, where it felt like it was set up. No, they've done it. You remember Rampage and Rashad did it. I think it was after UFC oh, 96. God. Back I don't recall that. That's going, we're going back a long time. Eh, yeah, fair enough. Uh, there was also Whitaker and Bisping not that long ago after Whitaker beat. I don't Yoda. recall. I don't recall that. They've done it. They've done it. Um, okay. I All feel right. like it was a conspiracy against you. They didn't want you to get that shine. It was. Well, you know, it was last minute on my uh, on my part. It was last, You know, I'm texting him while the fights are going on. Like, okay. hey, let, let me get in that cage. You know. Why is it so important for you at this point to sit down with him? Why do you keep trying to go back to that well? Um. Because it's, I mean, listen, this isn't just Dana. Obviously, Dana is very important right now. But uh, anyone in my life, Ariel, I don't get along with, and that I'm going to have to, you know, either do business with or deal with or have a friendship with, and I'm not seeing eye to eye. I feel like let's just sit down and, and figure out what the f's wrong and fix it. I mean, it's, it's really simple because it's doing better, you know, for the for myself, for Dana, for the UFC. If, if him and I are seeing eye to eye, I think it's going to be a lot better for everybody. Okay, and so is there? And we, and we don't got we don't got to be friends. I'm not saying we got to be friends, sure. but for us to have a mutual respect and kind of see eye to eye, I think that makes a lot more sense. But this is a lot different than what you said like just two weeks ago. Like you want the conflict, right? Why do you want to sit down? It's better for you this way, no? Isn't this been part of your your charm? Hmm. 
Well, so should I cancel my meeting? I think so. Or, or bring me to the meeting. Or um, go to the meeting and have a chair like Stone Cold and then just bam, you know, right. sneak at there. Or uh -huh. I come in with a, with a microphone and a camera and say that I want to record this. That would be, I mean, that would be so interesting. I would say I, that would be, I suggested Joe Rogan does it because he's a little, Dana's on a little better terms with Joe than he is with you. Fair, yes, uh, yes. And, uh, you know, that would probably be the biggest MMA podcast of all time. Is he, is he interested? Have you asked him? No, uh, I have not. You know what? I haven't. Maybe I will. A little rude to bring up another podcast while you're on my show. No, I mean, that's kind of like a slap in the face. Well, I mean, if you had a better relationship with him, maybe you could make it happen. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> um, hey, are you a basketball commentator now? Yeah, how about that? You see that? I don't oh, need you guys anymore. I didn't know you knew anything about that game. I'm very well versed, Ben. I'm, I'm not okay. just a one-trick pony like you guys, all right? Right, fair enough. Fair so enough. So if you continue to disrespect, not you, but I'm just sending a message to the MMA world, oh, I will just leave. I will just leave. leave. Yes, I will just oh leave. Goodness. I will take my ball and go home. In a perfect world, no, when do you want to fight again? I, I really like that uh, that June 8 card. That's obviously in Chicago. That's, That's right. hour and a half from my hometown. I haven't, uh, you know, I fought Asia for four years, so I didn't fight anywhere close to my hometown. But the last time I fought anywhere reasonably close to my hometown was like nine years ago. So having, having a bout somewhere close to home would be great. Um, uh, the International Fight Week, obviously going to be a really big card. I'd love to be on that one also. And... Um, you know, somewhere not too far away would be great. So I think those those two are probably you, your ones that I really have my eye on. Have you have you healed up? Are you all good? I'm great. I did a training session this morning, a few in last week. Uh, yeah, great. You're skipping over the bits I want to talk about. What I want to get to is the people's main event, Lewis. We're walking, of course. We're, working on we're talking Henry Cejudo. We're talking triple champs. We're talking snakes being whacked. We're talking Valentina Shevchenko and the heads getting knocked off. But we're working our way down to what I really want to talk about, which is Tony Ferguson, Donald Cerrone. Give me your thoughts, baby boy. Uh... It was awesome. It was fun. It's exactly what you thought it was going to be. Uh, I, th I thought everyone thought Tony was going to be a little bit too much for Donald. Um, and he started coming on really strong. The whole, it was a bizarre ending. Um, but Donald said it best. It, it, look, here's the thing. It, it's only as controversial as you want to make it. Okay. So Cerrone could have complained and bitched and moaned. But when he got in front of the microphone, he was like, look, dude, that punch after the bell. And we can explain what it is for people that didn't watch. Um... Uh, but right at the end of the second round, I believe it was, right? Uh, second. The bell rang and, um, what's it called? Uh, Tony threw a, a shot right after the bell. That was, you know, it was, a, it was, for all intents and purposes, a dirty shot. I think most people would agree that he should have been paying attention a little bit more to that moment. Emotions are high, flying high. He's, you know, you lose control of your body. But you guys are professional athletes and there's rules. So I think you got to adhere to those rules. Yes, sir. Well, there is rules, Lewis, but also one of the rules of the octagon is to fight. You have to fight, and timidity, believe it or not, is a foul. If you're being too timid, you can be penalized. I don't know what kind of world uh, gladiator era they're, they're forcing us into, but yeah, timidity, not fighting, is actually against the rules. So you have to fight, Lewis. It's the referee's job to get in and signify the end of the round. Now, the round ended, and then boom, Tony Ferguson threw a right hand, I believe it was. It hit Ferguson. It was a solid shot. Ferguson, sorry, Cerrone, recoiled, almost fell over, almost put him down. It was a good shot. Straight in the but nose. The but the referee didn't jump in. And you got to fight until the referee says no. Now, I never heard the clapper, and I, I didn't hear end of the round. Maybe he di didn't. Have you ever been in the heat of the moment, Lewis, doing something that your life depended on it? You've got Donald Cowboy Cerrone trying to head kick you. You weren't thinking about the clock. You weren't thinking about the crowd. You're thinking about fighting for survival. It's up to the referee to dive in between the two of you and say, whoa, the round is over. So I've got no problem with what uh, Ferguson did. If I'm honest, I see Harrington floating in. Harrington, come up, say something, argue with me. Try and make myself look stupid. Please go ahead. Do you got a problem with uh, the the shot after the bell? Do you think that that would you call that a dirty shot or is it just sort of a uh, you know uh, 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 you know par for the course? Being a fighter, sometimes those shots are going to slip through. I mean, because Harrington would know all about the life of being a fighter. So yeah, I'm glad you asked it. I'm glad you dressed it up in that fashion. Uh, give us your fighter breakdown uh, experience, Harrington. Well, from what I remember, from what I remember, 
I want to remember when uh when Lewis hits me. I'm not hearing you on my. Is it coming through? Are you hearing him, Mike? Please? I hear him, but not through the microphone. Come next to me because that microphone's not working. I'm not hearing that one. Yeah. Good. Come faster. You why? You, why are you such I'll be a? Good. Can I just say this? My son, my son Callum will never rush. It pisses me off. Sometimes I'm late. Sometimes we're in a rush. I'm like, son, we gotta hustle. He will he won't even skip. He just saunters along. Much like Harrington to the microphone. Yeah, Harrington but your son isn't mind. producing no. a fucking live podcast where Andre Peterson's timing is of the essence and you wanna, you know, see so just like a sloth, like just slowly. Yeah, moving but that's over. I'm like, son, we're late. Come on, let's go. He's like, I need to get my shoes and he'll slowly sludge up the stairs like a slug. I'm like, get a fucking move on, let's go. Harrington, over yes, to sir. you, the floor is yours. I, I you know, I thought it was a dirty shot. You know, plain and simple. I, you could see, like, the ref was standing in between them. The 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 hand was already going. For Cerrone, a guy who's been in more fights than anyone else in the UFC, for him to look at you and be like, that was fucked up, that, to me, says everything I need to hear about. Good job. You keep your job. That's right. Suck my dick, Michael Bisping. How'd that feel? How'd that feel? Two versus one. Finally, I'm right. I don't even know where to begin. I mean, the, the <laughs> writing, you know, I mean, listen, we all know by now, Harrington is just a sycophant. He will <laughs> literally agree with anything you say. Right? We know this. Brian, Brian, that punch was fine, correct? I, I get it. Things happen in the heat of the moment. Mike. Oh, Brian, you <laughs> son of a bitch. Who do you work for? <laughs> Who the fuck do you work for? <laughs> he's so he, far away right now. He's in a half mansion. You think he's going to give you a piece of that half mansion? Think again. <laughs> <laughs> no, listen, listen. When you're in the heat at the moment, you're, put, you're throwing punches. It is what it is. It wasn't that late of a blow. Anyway, anyway, anyway never mind that. We're jumping to the end of the fight. We're Either way. The the, don't even let me talk about the fight, the, the sequence of events leading up to that punch. Can we do that? I, the point is, I think that uh, they both did a great job. And I think that the punch didn't really matter that much in the grand scheme of things he was on his way to losing that fight in a very big way anyway and he even admitted that the punch wasn't the reason the fight was stopped it was blowing his nose and michael bisping has shut me out yeah that's me that's me uh talk to the hand what is it talk to the hand because you need talk a man to, talk to the hand bro no 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 so here's the thing um Obviously, I had to give a pick on ESPN who I thought was going to win the fight. And I thought about it and I thought, yeah, Tony Ferguson all day, of course. I mean, the guy's won 11 in a row. He's beaten fantastic competition. Uh, he's big. He's got a good chin. He has a tremendous gas tank. He has excellent jujitsu. And as I say, winning 11 in a row going into that fight is an incredibly hard thing to do. And he's finishing a lot of the people, you know, Kevin Lee, Edson Barboza, I mean, the, and, uh, Anthony Pettis, these are top of the food chain guys. So you got to think Tony Ferguson would win that fight. But then when I thought about it, in the first rounds and even the second round sometimes, Tony Ferguson is very hittable. You know, if you look back at when he fought Lando Venata, on short notice, Lando Venata came in and really peaked Tony up, hit him with the three piece in the solder, uh, for want of a very annoying expression that's doing the rounds these days. Um, and I thought, as the fight progresses, Donald Cerrone gets stronger. You know what I mean? Like, Ferguson normally walks his opponents down and they wilt and they get tired and then he takes over and normally gets a finish. Cerrone, as the fight goes on, actually gets stronger. So I thought to myself, oh, wow, this is going to be a controversial pick, but I'm going to say Donald Cerrone. And first round, went out there and he was looking true to that because Cerrone did look really, really good in that first round. Landed a lot of good shots, punches, kicks, you name it. Just, just kind of piecing him up, landing nice combinations and was definitely in control of the fight. But Ferguson, I mean, El Kikui, that is the perfect nickname. He is the bogeyman. He just fucking walks forward through anything, puts you under immense pressure, puts you on the back for all the while, racking up shots, punching you in the face, kicking you in the leg, hitting you to the body, slowing you down, just breaking you down bit by bit by bit. And he does it to the point where the opponent can't take it anymore. Yeah. Now, of course, uh, he, he, he done a good job of, you know, beating, for, uh, sorry, Cerrone up in that second round and Cerrone was wearing it. And, uh, you know, he, he made a bit of a mess of his eye and then he hits him square on the nose, round ends, late punch, not a late punch. It was late, but it wasn't the end of the world. Certainly wasn't 
uh, the need for a discussion of disqualification or even a point off. Sometimes a late shot gets through. A late shot got through. That's well, the way I let go. me ask you a question. What if the late shot got through? That late shot, because I agree. And especially with Cerrone said, he was like, look, dude, he didn't. And what's funny is Rogan was in the octagon arguing. Rogan got in and was like arguing with the official being like, hey, he did punch him in the nose. The only reason he blew his nose is because he just punched him in the nose. So essentially that created the effect of him blowing and clearing his nose and that's made what made his eye blow up. And I don't really under, and I'm sure you, and I want to, I want to hear your, you know, uh, you explain that a little bit more because people that don't have their noses broken and, you know, they don't understand why that would do what it did. Um, but if that knocked him out, that shot that he took, would you have said that should be, uh, would you count that as a win for El Kukui? No. So this, you're technically admitting that oh, it was... Oh, sorry, 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 pardon me. If if that punch had knocked him out, yeah. It you would have counted a knockout. Him. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Because the referee didn't get in in time. The, you know, if the fight stops, you have to defend yourself at all times. The referee never got in there. Honestly, I, I love Dan Mergley Hotter, even though I can't say his name. He's a great referee, great guy, you know, but... Uh, he probably should have got in there a little sooner, a little yeah. earlier to stop that happening. What happened with his nose there? He blew his nose, and apparently when you have your nose broken, you're not supposed to blow it out. You're not supposed to clear the air. What? It, why is that? And I'm sure they tell you that when you're a fighter. You've had your nose broken many a times. I'm looking at you. So explain this. So what happens is when you get hit in the nose, obviously, if, if you've never had it, but if you get punched in the nose, often you'll get two black eyes. You know what I mean? Because it's just kind of connected. I'm, I'm no doctor, so I'm going to butcher this. But when you get punched in the face, the blood vessels break uh, or become torn or whatever. But obviously, it's all connected. So when you blow your nose, it sends extra pressure up through there. And it just causes the blood vessels or something to uh, inflate or something like that. I don't know. It just, it just sends more pressure up there and just accentuates the damage you've already got. I mean, that eye of Donald Cerrone. Whoo! I mean, that was... That was impressive because that thing was fucked. Up. You watched it, it happen. Really if you just watched him on camera, you literally watch his eyes swell in real time. It was one of the craziest things ever because when they show the shot at the bell, his eyes open. You're looking at his fucking eyeball. And then within 35 seconds, it is just, whooshed. it's like a tight vagina just was glued to his eye. If you have not already, hit that subscribe button with its notification bell and leave a comment in the comment box below of what you thought of the video and tune in for more on MMA news outlet.